We're now going to graph a quadratic equation as well as look at how to graph its reciprocal. In order to graph this original quadratic, I need to get some key points. So I'm going to check first of all to see if it's factorable. Are there two numbers that multiply to negative three and add to negative two? It is, so this will give me my x-intercept. So I can see that I'm going to have an x-intercept at positive three, and I'm also going to have another x-intercept at negative one. If I convert this from standard form into vertex form, we can also get the vertex. So I'm going to complete the square. If we divide a out of those first two terms, it is just one. And then we're going to square root the first term. We're going to take half of that x term. And then I can see I'm going to have negative one squared is positive one. I need to get down to negative three, so I'm going to subtract four. That will give me a vertex at one, negative four. So we can also go ahead and plot that point. We can also see that we're going to have a y-intercept of negative three, and then connect those key points into a parabola, and there's our original function. If we take the reciprocal of that, we're now going to have one over that original function. And the first thing we're going to do is determine where those asymptotes will lie. So again, what are the values of x that will make that denominator equal to zero? Well, we know that will occur at the zeros of the original function. So we have already established our zeros are those x-intercepts. So I'm now going to draw in those asymptotes. And again, because we're not adding or subtracting anything to this reciprocal function, we are going to have an asymptote on that x-axis where y is zero because there is no value we can put in here that's going to make this equal to zero. The second thing we need to do is figure out where those invariant points lie. And we know that they always occur when y is equal to positive one or negative one. So let's begin with positive one. I'm going to substitute one in the place of y and we're gonna see what values of x will give us a y value of one. So because it's a quadratic, I'm going to begin by setting it equal to zero. I'm gonna subtract one from each side and then I'm going to see if this is factorable. Are there two numbers that multiply to negative four and add to negative two? There are not. So in this case, you could go into the quadratic formula to get those exact values. The other thing you could do is complete the square. So you can turn this back into vertex form and then from vertex form quickly isolate x like we did in quadratics. All right, so really quickly, because my a value is one, if I divide one out of those first two terms, they are not changing in value. Square root the first term to get x. We're gonna take half of that negative two x and we're gonna get negative one x here. And so then when we go to FOIL this, we're going to square the first term to get back to x squared, double the product. So negative 1x times 2 gives us that negative 2x. And then right now I'm at negative 1 squared is positive 1. I have positive 1. I need to get down to negative 4. We need to subtract 5 in order to get there. Our goal is now to isolate x. So I'm going to begin by moving that 5 over, and it's going to become a positive 5. I'm going to then divide out this value here, which is just a 1, which won't change that. I'm going to get rid of that squared by square rooting. And remember, that's going to give us a positive and a negative root. And then I'm going to add 1 in order to isolate x and so we have one invariant point when x is 1 plus the square root of 5 and y is 1. We have a second invariant point when we have 1 minus the square root of 5 and y is 1. Now you might want to put those in your calculator just to get the decimal equivalents and then you can go ahead and plot those. And when you plot each of these two points they should be the same points that occur on that original curve there. And now we need to do this again if y has a value of negative 1. So I'm going to substitute negative 1 into that function and then because it's a quadratic I'm going to add 1 to each of those terms to bring that left side to 0 and now I'm going to check to see if this is factorable. Are there two numbers that multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 2? There are not. So at this point, you could use the quadratic formula in order to get those x-intercepts, or you can complete the square to turn this into vertex form and then quickly rearrange to isolate x. So let's review how to do that again, similar to what we did when we first looked at quadratics. I can see that I have an a value of one. So if I divide one out of those first two terms, I'm still gonna get one. We're gonna square root this first term to get that x. And then if I take half of this term, I'm gonna get that negative one. And then in terms of the constant term, I can see right now I have negative one squared becomes positive one. I'm at positive one. I need to get down to negative two. So we're going to subtract three. And then quickly, if you FOIL this out and then combine your like terms, will we get back to the original standard form? So you can always double check to make sure that you did it correctly. And now if I want to isolate X, I'm going to begin by moving that 
over and it's going to become positive 3. I'm going to divide out that a value, which is 1, so that won't change anything. We're going to get rid of that squared by square rooting, which will give us both a positive and a negative root. And then we're going to add 1 to isolate x. And we now have two more invariant points that we can plot on that graph. And again, they will also fall on the same points on that original curve. So 1 plus the square root of 3 occurs when y is at negative 1. 1 minus the square root of 3 occurs again when y is at negative 1. Now from here we can also get some other information because we know that every point on the reciprocal graph will have a reciprocal y coordinate to the original graph. So if my original vertex is at 1, negative 4, take the reciprocal of that negative 4 and our vertex on the reciprocal graph will be at negative 1 quarter. So we can see here when we look at the different regions of this graph, this kind of looks linear in that section. This one here here kind of looks linear in that section. The quadratic part happens to fall in here. So I'm going to actually, and you can always make a table of values and generate some more points, or you can graph it on your graphing calculator and just kind of compare how the two look. But what I'm going to do is use this invariant point and I'm going to approach the asymptotes. I'm going to use this invariant point and I'm going to approach the asymptotes. I'm going to plot that reciprocal vertex. So it's going to be one, negative one quarter there. So when when we go to draw this in, it's going to go through the invariant point and it's going to approach those vertical asymptotes. This one is going to go up there and again I don't have a lot of room. We're trying not to go in a straight up and down line that makes it no longer a function but we're going to have a graph that looks something like that. And then I just put the graph down here so we can take a look at the domain and the range. So for that original quadratic we had that parabola that goes like this. We go, Our domain is just going to be x is an element of the real number system. Our range Range, take a look at that vertex coordinate, negative 4 is our minimum value. So for the range, y is going to be equal to negative 4 and all values of y greater than negative 4. So y is greater than or equal to negative 4 and y is an element of the real number system. On the reciprocal graph, if we take a look at the domain, we're going to see that we're going to have the graph every value of x here, we're going to have every value of x along here, and we're going to have every value of x along here. So x is going to be almost every value along the x-axis. We will not have an x value at that asymptote. We will not have an x value at that asymptote. So x is an element of the real number system for every value except x cannot be negative 1 or 3. With the range, if we take a look at this, the graph is going to continue down to negative infinity. You're going to see that the reciprocal vertex here is at negative one quarter. So that's negative one quarter. It's going to be every value of y less than that. So we've got y is going to be less than or equal to negative one quarter. And then because these pieces are going to approach that asymptote, it's going to be every value of y greater than zero. Make sure you do not put equal to zero here. Y cannot equal zero. That's where our asymptote lies. Y is greater than zero and y is a real number. And the last thing we want to look at is if we're given the reciprocal function, can we determine both the equation and the graph of that original function? We do know that any point on the original function, if we take the reciprocal of that y coordinate, that point will appear on the reciprocal function. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the graph and from this graph I can tell that my original function was going to be linear and then we also know that the vertical asymptote lies where any x-intercepts were on the original graph. So my vertical asymptote here is x equals negative 1. So that tells me that on the original function we have a y-intercept at negative 1. This x plus 1 becomes a factor in the original equation. We can go ahead and plot that point in there as well. And then we need one other point on the graph. So in this particular case they've identified a point here, negative 2 and negative 1 quarter. That lies on the reciprocal graph. If I reciprocate that y-coordinate I'm going to have a point on my original graph which we need to get that equation. So on the original graph we're going to have a point at negative 2, negative 4. We can go ahead and plot that point and then that's going to give us the graph of the original function. You sometimes are going to see a reciprocal graph where you're not going to have a point clearly identified for you. So you want to remember that we also have invariant points that are the same on the original function as the reciprocal. So take a look where y is equal to positive 1 
Do we know that point? Where y is equal to negative 1, do we know that point? On this particular graph, they're not really clear, which is why they probably identified a different point for us, but that's another strategy that you could use. In this particular graph, once I plot that x-intercept and once I plot that point, I can see because it's linear, I'm going up 4 over 1. If I go up another 4 over 1, that is my y-intercept. So I can get the equation knowing that y equals mx plus b. I'm just going to replace m with an a and we've got the slope, we've got the y-intercept, this is going to be the equation of our original function. If we're unable to get a whole number for a y-intercept, or we have something like a quadratic, where we can't just determine the slope, another way you can go about this is to say, okay, we know that x plus 1 is going to be a factor in that function. So if we take that, a is going to determine the shape of that graph. So I can use any other point on that graph, I can substitute the y-coordinate in for y, I can substitute the x-coordinate in for x, and we can solve for a. So in this case, I'm going to put those values in. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Divide negative 1 from negative 4, and we're going to get a is positive 4, which means that the function is going to be y equals 4 times x plus 1. And if we were to distribute that 4 into the brackets, you're going to see that we get the same thing we had over here. So this is my original function. This is the graph of that original function.